Hello and welcome to a special work in progress episode here on Captain's Dry Dock. And in the episode today, we're making the biceps of the First Order Stormtrooper armor. Let's make it real. So I'm going to make one of those famous predictions that I have and say that this is going to be a very straightforward and easy build. However, I did say that about the crotch and butt plate on a previous episode and that turned out to be a really difficult task. However, I really do think this is going to be straightforward because it's just four pieces, two for each part of the arm. They get glued together, filled, sanded, painted and then job done. However, I was a silly sausage. I didn't listen to my own advice a few episodes ago as when I started trimming all this, I actually trimmed off the lettering saying which one's gonna be the left bicep and which one's gonna be the right bicep. And so I had all these parts, but I didn't know which arm it's gonna be. So then I had to be a dustbin raider go through my dustbin and try and find the parts, which I eventually did. There we go, it's got left and right in the Sharpie. However, because I did so much trimming and sanding, they no longer matched up to the parts that they were originally joined to. So then I just had to look at pictures, and to be fair, it's not too difficult to work out which one's left and which one's right, because you've got the details of the clips, as well as the pill holes as well. So, phew. When starting your first order Stormtrooper armor, there's a question you need to ask yourself, are you gonna drill into it? Meaning that every time you see a pill hole, are you gonna make it a hole and then back it up with some type of material like webbing and the foam with gaffer tape? Or are you just gonna use one of the decals or stickers that came with your armor? Now, speaking to an expert who I've liaised with throughout this entire build, he's actually said to me that the only time those holes actually drilled into the armor on the actual uh, film set uh, armor pieces was the chest plate where you see the pill holes. Everywhere else, not even the vent that slit at the top, they weren't holes, there were stickers, black stickers in there or vinyl stickers. Now. I love that look of the hole with the uh, with the webbing and the foam behind there. It gives the armor a nice detail and depth. And I've seen many troopers out there that have done that successfully. And I think it's brilliant. But am I going to do that? I'm gonna go halfway. So I'm gonna drill holes into this and then add some uh, plastic behind there to make it nice and flat. Because as you know, with vac forms, everything's rounded. Nothing's a sharp corner. And especially when you're having holes, it's, you need it to be perfectly sharp. And to do so, I need to rub off the back of this like I did with the chest armor pill holes. And then I'm gonna back it up with plastic so it's nice and sharp. And then I'm gonna add either paint or I'm just gonna use one of the vinyl stickers that came with my armor. So it's this stage that I'm gonna drill out the holes, the pill holes. And as you can see, they're probably called pill holes because they're in the shape of a pill. So I'm gonna use a combination of a Dremel and also needle files to make that a perfect hole. Once I made the two holes, all I need to do is just get my scalpel and just cut out the middle bit. And once I get it close to looking perfect, I'll get out the needle f uh, files and start, that's right, cleaning up the edges. Oopsie, I made a mistake. This isn't actually in four parts, it's actually six parts because the resin clips. So this is all, these clips are all over the armor, they're on the helmet, and there's one on each arm as well. And they go in the lovely indentation. Uh, I'm not too sure about the orientation yet. It's either there or there. So that's something to note. Also, while I'm here is this detail. Now there are some really hardcore uh, builders out there who will cut this out and make this even more well-defined because this is vac form, like I mentioned, before it's actually all rounded off when it should be nice and crisp and what they've done they've cut this out and got a couple of pieces of plastic stuck them together and so you've got that lovely little stepped look there now on this particular build i'm not going to go into that level of detail mainly because it's a faff to do compared to making those holes however later on in the build if i want to be able to go back and do this uh, i can and that's one great thing about the uh, building stormtrooper armor if you're not happy with something later on go back and uh, improve it. 
So this should be straightforward to put together. It's just two parts that are stuck together at the seams. However, no two seams are the same. So on one of the seams, you've actually got a flange, which is an overlapping piece of plastic that you just put glue on and then you just clamp it down and that's fine. And I think it's actually meant to have a noticeable seam as well. And either way, it's not a big deal because that's on the inside of the arm, so you're not gonna see it. But I have to do my research just to make sure I don't need to fill that. It gets a bit tricky on the other side because there's no flange. So these two seams have got to come together and be seamless. But yeah, as you can imagine, that means there's gonna be a lot of filling, sanding, painting, and then repeating until all this is just nice and smooth. So what I had to do is make my own flange. So what I did, I just uh, cut off a strip of, let's just say one inch uh, plastic and then stuck it behind here. And as you can see, I've had to cut around the holes and then stick it and clamp it together. And I used Aldite for that or two part epoxy resin because I want this to be a really, really firm hold and not come apart because this seam is gonna be filled and the last thing I want is this cracking down here. But it's not as straightforward as that because, yep, yeah, this is flat and there's a curvature to this. Now, if I stuck that flat piece there, it would mean that this would be flat and not a perfect curve. And as you can see here, I've actually made the offcut slightly curved. Now, how did I do that? The hot air gun, really cheap and really effective. Now, what I needed to do is get myself an item like this, a nice glass jar, which is heat resistant, then get myself an oven glove, get my strip, heat it up, and once it's really, really malleable and floppy, I'll then press it onto the glass jar, and then press it all the way down like so, and then that will give me the slight curve that I need. Usually I always use Aldite, which is a brand of two-part epoxy resin, but I actually ran out the stuff. So I quickly got hold of a cheap version, which was this. Now, I'm not gonna tell you the brand of this, but let's put it this way, it was cheaper and it actually was not as good. After I took the clamps off, those strips with a little bit of a tug peeled away with the actual two-part epoxy resin. And if any of you people out there actually use two-part epoxy resin, it should not do that because it's meant to be super strong and really cling on to the material. So the lesson is, don't use something so cheap on something that is so precious. So the result of this, in the bin, and go back a couple of steps. So does this mean that I've got to now run down to the shops and buy myself some Aldite, the brand of two-part epoxy resin I trust, or because I haven't got much time, just go through my drawers and toolbox and find an alternative? Well, I could use my E6000 glue, but as I probably mentioned before, I want this seam to be basically permanent and there's no chance of this coming apart. So I found this stuff, plastic melt. Yeah, it sounds really extreme, but bear with me on this. Many years ago, when I was young and you was even younger, I had a very brief three month career working at an architectural model makers. Now the materials they mainly used was this fact form type plastic. In fact, they didn't really use a glue. They used this chemical, which was called diachloromethane. Now it seems to be in public consumption and you can get the stuff on Amazon, but you can imagine it was gonna be a struggle to try and, try and get people to spell diachloromethane and so they just called it plastic melt. And how it works is that you get your two pieces of plastic, you just brush on the chemical on one side and then you just place the other part on the other and then just literally give it a minute and it already becomes stuck. Give it five to 10 minutes and it's welded. So I've just done this about 10, 20 minutes ago and so that's what it does. It doesn't so much stick, it welds the two materials together, which means that this is just as strong as the rest of the plastic. So if there's anything you want permanent, don't use a glue, use this stuff, which is ideal for this type of material. I've already done the first part of the flange and that has welded completely and not going anywhere. So it's brilliant. So now I'm just gonna add this part here and I'm gonna show you how I actually apply the plastic weld. Oh, the reason why it's not one long strip is mainly because I could only heat a certain length at a time because that's how big the jar was as you saw early on in the episode. So how I do this is get hold of the jar. Now I'm wearing gloves. Now a lot of people don't tend to wear gloves because it, it's not not that bad, it's not gonna melt your skin, but again, it's always good to wear gloves when dealing with any chemicals whatsoever. Now you can use either straw or with this brand, they give you a syringe. B 
because it's the viscosity is such that it's really really thin and runny i can just inject some all along the seam and this is exactly what we used to do uh, when, uh, when making architectural models and not to worry about it going over the material because this just flakes off it's just magic it's brilliant how it works so if you're worried about staining the plastic or damaging the plastic you don't have to worry because what it will do that will evaporate and if there's no other plastic touch in it it means it will just flake off but everything in between that is going to weld so when you've actually started putting together your parts to make up the entire armor one thing you have to bear in mind is the edges to round them off because you can imagine once you cut the edges of this plastic it's sometimes rough and sharp and even though you're wearing a body stocking underneath the armor it can still catch on the fabric which is a real nightmare so what i'd always advise you to do with any edges which are exposed get some wet and dry and just round off the edges. It seems like a little job to do, but it makes all the difference when you eventually put on all the Stormtrooper armor. One of the perils of working with this type of material is that it can split. And once it splits, there's no turning black back. That will actually carry on all the way through your armor and eventually it will break and you'll probably have to replace it. However, there are a couple of solutions for that. One of which is actually get hold of contact cement and mix up very little pieces of this plastic and you make it a paste and you paste it behind where the split is, which essentially is just welding the plastic together. Now that is one solution, although it's a bit of a faff having to do that and I can imagine there's a lot of odour to it and it's going to take a while to actually cure. However, as I've mentioned before, I've started to use plastic weld or the engineering name for it is diachloromethane and I just had that predicament where there was a tiny tiny split at the top of the rim of this armor and I caught it just in time so all I needed to do was just put it together again in regards to making sure it's all aligned and just squirt a little bit of this stuff on there and just leave it for 10 minutes and what that did just melted together in fact it was almost seamless once I gave it a pass to some wet and dry you can barely tell there was a split there in the first place so I highly recommend that solution in regards to fixing any armor because as you'll start wearing this, the wear and tear of moving around, it will eventually happen. So that's a really great solution for a common problem being a stormtrooper of the first order. Now the procedure of filling using flexible filler, mixing, applying, sanding, Cleaning, painting, and if there are any imperfections, repeating several times. So the armour comes with these greeblies, they're all over the armour of different sizes and I've identified these two as going on the bicep. Now what are they? Well I think the design wise for the Stormtrooper armour, this is how the Stormtrooper snaps on their armour together. However because this is a kit and we are in real life, these are just aesthetic and they're just resin pieces. Uh, which means they need some cleaning up and in fact if you just look closer, you can see how it's made. So this was resin poured onto into a single piece mold and it's all shiny here and it lips round as the viscosity of the resin hits the walls of the silicon. And so I need to actually flatten that off. Hence the fact, yep, you guessed it, more sanding. The pearls of gloss white paints. Now, bear in mind that I filled, sanded and primed this four times. And even then, when I thought it was perfect, it wasn't until I applied the gloss white that it started to up every different type of imperfection known to man. I mean, literally, you can see the seam, you can see the slight gradients with the filler, the plastic, it's terrible. Now, don't get me wrong when it comes to this armor, I'm not too hung up on little details or little little imperfections, but that's gonna stand out like a sore thumb because it's a very large area. So yes, that means me having to sand that localized area down, refill it, sand it, prime it, and then check again to make sure it's fine. Luckily, the other arm turned out great. So it's just this one. So the frustrations of a gloss white Stormtrooper. 
While I'm here, I just gotta let you know that the hairdryer that I used to warm up my outdoor spray booth packed up. Obviously, a hairdryer should not be on for hours on end, especially filling up this whole area, which takes forever. So I just bit the bullet, I went on Amazon and got myself one of these. An electric heater. This was only 14 quid and it's designed to stay on for long periods of time and give a constant heat and it's much more variable as well. And yes, I know it takes up a lot more electricity, but believe me, you don't have to have this on for too long to warm up the spray booth area, which means that I'm gonna get a fantastic finish on my Stormtrooper armor and not have to go through so many hair dryers because it's kind of weird me going to the shop asking for another hair dryer. Okay, early on in this episode, I was banging on about making sure that when I was going to make the holes in the bicep part of this armour, I was going to back it on with some flat plastic and to uh, use the vinyl or paint to make it look like it's a hole, as per the movie versions of the armour. However, I'm going 180 on this because now that I've painted this and made those holes, it's going to look a little bit naff. It's going to look a little bit cheap. And yes, I know that's what it was like in the movies. But then again, that was the movies. No one's going to scrutinise that level of detail, even if it is at 4K resolution. And so I'm going to use this material. TF1 in black. Now I'm looking at my notes here. This is from Tough Fabric based in Torquay, that's in the UK. And this is exactly 400 GSM TF1 in black. So this is the material they use to back the pill holes which appear in the chest plate and nowhere else. It's actually not part of the vent either, despite what you see out there, everyone does that. Uh, and I can see why people do because it's such a nice effect and it's a lovely bit of detail on this armor rather than using a vinyl. Will I be scrutinized on this when I actually submit these photographs to the 501st UK? Uh, I don't know, but it's worth a go because but frankly, when it comes to my armour, people are going to be seeing it up close and personal, not on screen. So these little details really do stand out. And for me, it's a nice bit of detail to have on an armour which is very plain looking. And this will stand out a lot. And believe me, look, I've got so much of this material. I might as well use it when I can. And with the magic of video editing, the paint has dried and it's all polished up and it's looking great. Now I just have to finish it with a couple of details, starting with these pill holes as mentioned before. So I've cut those out, look, 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 look. there we are, two little windows in the arm. And my original plan was to put some material behind it to make it look flush, namely this black piece of backing. And that looks fine. In fact, the look is very much similar to what they did on the movies, or so I've been told by reputable sources and what I've actually seen in research. So it was basically vinyl stickers which were stuck on where these holes were, whereas this is a much better effect on this type of armour. However, I'm not going to go with that. I'm going to go with the material effect. Now, if I just pop that behind here, it's hard to tell on the camera, but I can assure you up close and personal, this looks like a fantastic detail, which gives the armor a bit of depth and intrigue to what's going on behind it, other than me, of course. Now, the material I'm using is this stuff. So as I mentioned, this is the same type of material used on the pill holes of the chest plate. And I'm gonna use this wherever there's pill holes across the armor, namely on the biceps and on the legs. Now you can't just cut a piece off and place it behind the holes because you need to have some backing with it. I'm gonna show you how I made that. So there's a reason why I put backing behind this because yeah, you can see straight through it, which I don't want uh, when it's on the armor. So I need to add some black backing, namely this piece of black muslin, which is good enough. Now, if I just pop that over there, what it does, it still shows off the effect of the weave, but yet stops you seeing all the way through it. Now, how I attach that is good old hot glue. Now, all I'm gonna do is just put some hot glue on here, all around the edge. And actually, I think they did this on the actual movie costumes as well. But you could correct me, but the pictures I've seen, this is how they did it. Bit of hot glue, there we go. And then, pop that directly on there. And so I'm sandwiching it together and that's gonna be glued together like so. Now that's glued, I just have to trim it. So it looks like a mess now, but not to worry. So I get some scissors here, trim off. I like to keep it neat, even though you're not gonna see any of this, I like to keep it all neat on the inside as well. 
because as I mentioned, I want to make this armor look like a, as if a real stormtrooper put this on. And there you have it. So I've got two parts there, two pieces. And actually the weave goes in different directions, but I'm going to have it this way. And then all I do is pop that in there and I'll attach that with some gaffer tape on the inside. So it means that if I need to make any repairs, I can just rip this off from, uh, with the gaffer tape, re repair the actual bicep armor and then reapply again. So again, with the aim of the game when you're actually making armor is try and make it so you can take things apart because trust me, it will need repairing if you're gonna do a lot of cosplay in it. The last detail to attach are these two clips, one clip for each bicep. Now I painted these separately as I mentioned because these are made out of resin and the paint adheres to them a little bit differently. So it's the same paint, but I use a different type of primer for these. Now you have to be careful when you attach these to the bicep armor because there is a certain direction. So it goes like this. So that small little clippy part, that's meant to be on the same side as where that is. Now, this is the part I mentioned where some people cut this out and make it accurate or even cut all the way along here to make it a step. But I'm being lazy and this is fine. However, what I have done is add some masking tape right here because if I'm going to glue something onto another piece of material, I want to make sure it's a glue into the material and not the paint. So what I did earlier on... I masked the uh, part of the armor where I'm going to be gluing this on. So now I'll add some glue here, stick that there, and that'll be solid. Yeah, I know, I look like one of the villains from Superman 2, but trust me, these are the garments of the First Order Stormtrooper, or to be precise, these are the undergarments made by Geeky Pink. So it's a harness system with the rib gaskets attached with Velcro. And there's a good reason why I'm wearing this at this point of the build. It's because that these bicep parts actually are attached by Velcro onto the edge of these gaskets. So there are other manufacturers of First Order Stormtrooper armor out there. And they've got all different types of systems, but this is the one that I've chosen to use. And so I'm gonna show you how to put it all on. Now, if you see, closely to the actual bicep armor I've actually popped in velcro strips so these are the hook side the rough side which will attach to the furry fluffy part of the velcro which has been stitched into this undergarment by geeky pink and so it's a bit of a faff trying to get it aligned because you have to make sure it's the right orientation not that way not this way but exactly that way so what i need to do is go to the bedroom in front of a mirror and spend five ten minutes getting it right sticking the uh, in interior of this inside that welcome to the gun show they look fantastic. I'm really happy how they turned out. Bear in mind, this is the first time I've popped these on. And yeah, I think the orientation is right because I think when you put your arms down, the clips are meant to be facing the viewer and then the holes are facing either way, that way. But it's actually really comfortable. I thought it'd be a little bit more restrictive because I'm five foot seven and proportionately my arms will be shorter because I think this is made for a trooper who should be about five, nine, six foot, but it's actually okay. It works out really, really well. Now, what I'll do, I'll explain to you how I've actually popped this in. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail about this whole harness system. That will happen near the end of the entire build once I get everything together because there's a lot of things that hang off this because that's a whole episode in itself. What I'll do, I'll explain how these attach to the gaskets. So remember, this system is the geeky pink system of attaching everything. So there's no straps and there's the Velcro as I described before. So yeah, again, I wish this was the hook side because I'd rather have the hook side facing toward, uh, outwards rather than inwards because it can actually start chafing and start ruining my uh, body stocking fabric underneath. Now you can see in there, there is the Velcro. Now I've done strips here uh, all the way around, uh, not totally covered because again, I've got the gaffer tape uh, enclosing the material of the pill holes there and what I do this is a system of trying to work out how I'm going to pop this in there so rather than just stuff it in I need to be methodical to make sure that it's in at the right orientation and when I say orientation I mean not this way not that way and it's really you can't really adjust it once it's all stuck in so what I do I fold it like this crimp it and then pop it all the way in like so 
and then I release. And then if you look in here, you can see one half of it is stuck in there. Now, I know this is like teaching you to suck eggs, but trust me, trying to get this in here evenly is very difficult. And this is the most accurate way I've discovered to do it. And then bring it outwards like so. And there we go. Actually, <laughs> it looks a bit... Uh, Looks a bit dodgy there, but um, <laughs> yeah. So there we have it. The, the, that's how I've attached the Geeky Pink's uh, ribbed gaskets inside my bicep armor. And also important to note, there's some Velcro which is showing here, and that's for the elbow gaskets. So they attach inside, very similar as well. Fold up and then you pop it in there and fill it out. But I won't be doing that until I start working on the next part of this armor, which will be the forearms. In conclusion, I'm really happy how they turned out. In fact, it was a very, very easy build to put together, as I stated as my prediction at the start of the episode. However, my caveat is it, it all depends on how much of a perfectionist you are in regards of making it seamless. So there was a lot of sanding, filling, painting, and repeating. And when you see a blemish and you have to go back again, yeah, it all depends on your standards. But I got it to the point where in fact, there are a few blemishes here, but you probably can't see that, and that's exactly what I want. Otherwise, you just go mad. If you enjoyed this work in progress episode, that's fantastic. Do a thumbs up on the button below. And also, if you haven't already done so, click on the subscribe button down there somewhere. And also, there'll be a logo popping up around here where you'll get a notification at the next episode here on Captain's Dry Dock. In the meantime, my name's John Child. This is Captain's Dry Dock. You stay safe and I'll see you on the next episode.